In this final video for the module, I'm going to go over UV snapshots. I'm going to start by doing basic cleanup though. So just as before, select the object, make sure that the uh, pivot is at the origin, make sure that it is named, that the history has been deleted. And by the way, UV mapping, there is a lot of history. Uh, in fact, UV mapping can be some of the most uh, pervasive and damaging history that there is. If you save the scene without first deleting the history, um, then the UV mapping can actually undo itself. It, it'll become jumbled and messed up. So please remember to delete all by type history. Uh, go in, modify freeze transforms. I'm going to go through the basic cleanup. So mesh cleanup. Check that I select matching polygons, faces with more than four sides, hit apply, so there's no end gons. I can check for, check for uh, back face culling, make sure that it's transparent where it should be and then not on the outside. I can check the outliner, make sure that's cleaned up. Select face, make sure there's nothing on the edges, just make sure that everything's cleaned up. All right, once it's all ready, and once again, you need to delete history. You don't want any history left over after you're doing the UV mapping. Otherwise, it can create massive problems down the road. But once that's cleaned up, so file, save scene as. In this case, I've already got it saved, so I'll just go file, save scene, and there's the object. Now, here's what we do for the UV snapshot. If I open up window or Windows Modeling Editor's UV Editor, so that's open once again, and I have the object selected. So I'll make sure this is selected in object mode. And if you notice, the coloring here also correlates to what's happening here. So if I select an edge, you see the blue versus the white where it's uncut. You can see in the 3D space what is sewn together and what is not. Um, this is another place where if you think you have everything sewn together, but you see a white line there instead, like in between or something else, um, then you may have an additional face that, that shouldn't be there or that needs to be cleaned out. But anyways, once that's all ready, cleaned, uh, and I've got it selected as an object, I can go to Image, UV Snapshot. Now, if you've got your project set, then it will automatically try and set it in the projects, uh, or in the project under Images, and then it names it out UV. You can actually change the location of that if you want to, or you can change the name. So in this case, um, I'll still put it in the Images folder, but I will call this uh, crate underscore one underscore UV. Hit save. I'm then going to change this image format to a Targa. Now when we get to the texturing module, I'll go into more depth about why we use Targas, but for now, just trust me, just save it as a Targa. I'm going to change this texture size to 256 by 256. Um, once again, once we get to the texturing portion, I'll go into a little more detail about that. For right now, don't stress too much about the, the exact things, but set it for Targa 256 by 256. Um, leave everything the same and hit apply. And you'll see down here it said save file. If I had hit apply and close, it would have done that. But if I open this up and I go to images, there's this new texture created, the Create One UV, which is a Targa. And I'm going to open this in Photoshop. So open with Photoshop. In Photoshop, this now becomes a guide for my painting process as I need to use it. So I can select that background, do something like Control J, which duplicates that background. Um, in between, I will add an additional layer and do edit, or excuse me, select all, edit, fill, and I can pick a base color. Hit OK. And then if I select that top layer and change it from normal to screen, this then becomes a guide 
that I can use as I'm painting. So I can add in other layers, start painting up wood textures, little uh, nails or whatever else I'm using as fasteners. And this becomes a way for me to have a structure to my texturing so I know where things need to be painted. So this is the, the power of uh, being able to map your UVs, um, laying them out in a way that makes sense in that zero to one space, giving everything its own space, um, and then using the UV snapshot as a guide for when you move into the texturing process. For this module, we're not going to jump into that. I just wanted to show you what that next step was. But this is how you can then utilize the UV mapping to be able to create textures. So that was kind of the final step. So I will uh, save once more and end this module for here.